Hey everybody, we're at Galt's Deli and we're doing an unplugged cooking class. I've got a warehouse out there, there's a whole bunch of people. So hang on, I'm gonna cook a bunch of dishes. The cooktop has already cracked, it's broken. So I'm going to gas in a portable one, so that's gonna make it a bit interesting. Also, I've just been told somebody's turned up with a box of five ingredients and they are gonna challenge me to a magic box. Let's go and do some cooking. Wow, what a quiet bunch. <laughs> Wake up everybody. Who's gonna do some cooking? You look like you'd be awesome. Come on, mate, let's go do some cooking. What's your name? Tim. Tim, that's what I know. Tim, you can, you can help me cook, come on. I've got one cook. Come, don't look so, not slowly. We haven't got all day, right? We are gonna cook a Mexican chicken dish. Mexican. All right, we're gonna do a bunch of cooking, right? We're gonna have some fun. Who's really crap at making omelets? Who's no good at making omelets? You're no good at making omelets. Right, you are my omelet cook, okay? We're gonna cook an omelet later on. I oh, know you don't want to. She does. What a great friend you are, hey? What is that all about? Now, is there anybody that doesn't want to be filmed? Put your hand up. Because we are... <laughs> Come on, mate. We're going to be good. Do you just chill out for a little bit? What the hell? Am I? This is Sawati over here. She is my rock star assistant. Amazing chef, master in pharmaceuticals degree. She's incredible. This is Hazel over here. You're going to you say it aside. Uh, firstly, I want to say thank you to all the team here who are working on their day off. It's Saturday, they are awesome. I am so lucky to have the most wicked team. This is Simone with the camera, or the iPhone. <laughs> All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna do a bunch of stuff. We're gonna hopefully get a whole bunch of tastings out to you. Feel free to ask a question, just wave your hand around if you want. If it gets a bit hot, we can open the back door. Now, what am I gonna do first? The first thing we're gonna serve you is a date. Now. Hands up who's not a four-wheeler here. Okay, so there's a few people. So we're gonna, we're gonna serve you a high-carb item, which is what in the Middle East they would use to break a fast. If you do a fast, you know, they do the Ramadan and things, and that is what they would have to break a fast. But we figure that somewhere I've got a date. Where is it? Um, date's right in front of me. Oh, right in front of me, there you go. Okay, so if we take a date, and we just open it up, and these ones are, isn't it amazing, you get these dates and they've got no pip in them. What's that about, right? You buy this and you think they look like a whole one, but they've taken the pips out when you buy them like that. So we're gonna put a pip inside it, and I'm gonna put half a walnut in there. It's really good for our brain, walnuts, right? We should be getting walnuts into our diet as often as we can. And then we're gonna take some goat's cheese, and we're going to put a little bit of goat's cheese in there, as much as you like, and then you're going to just stuff it like that. And the cool thing about these things is you can do them before your guests arrive, and you can cook them on the barbecue. They're a real great little tasty number. And then I've got a bit of this uh, bacon that we sell here, which is the neat thing about this bacon is that there's no added sugar in it, no added water. You know when you cook bacon, and you see all that white stuff come out of it? That's the soy lecithin, which keeps the water inside the bacon so they can literally rip you off and sell you water. So there's none of that in this, and it's literally the same price. Now the piece that they've cooked for you, they're giving you a great big piece of bacon wrapped around it. I just sort of stretch it out as much as I can, and then I roll it up like that, and then just put a toothpick in there and now I could cook these on the barbecue, or you could, if you've got guests coming for dinner, you could literally cook them in the oven until the bacon's cooked. Once the bacon's cooked, it's gonna be hot inside, and there's one coming out for all of you to have a taste of, so get ready, and it'll goo goat's cheese all down your front if you eat it properly, okay? <laughs> the bigger mess you make, the better. And see, I've got this little, uh, 
See, Swati's made me this beautiful little container to put them in. I, I guarantee you by the end of today, you'll all want to take a Swati home <laughs> for your cooking. All right, so I just wanted you to see how you do that. It's super, super easy. And now we're gonna cook together. We're gonna, first thing we need to do is make some stock. We're doing a Mexican chicken. The whole sort of theme of today is fast food. Because I know, I know how four wheels just love going to McDonald's and KFC and all that sort of thing. So it's all about stuff that's quite easy and fast that you can have prepared in advance. So you can literally cook this chicken dish. Um, I should have had a look around here before I started. Hey, so buddy, where's this chicken stock? So we've got some water over here. And we're going to make two, two dishes. You're going to make one. And I'm going to make one, right. Who wants to taste Tim's one? <laughs> oh, what a miserable bunch, hey? Oh, I'm having yours, bro. All right, um, there we go. So we wouldn't need to make some stock. Here's the ad, everybody. Are you ready for my stock? It's in a pouch, right? Of course, you all use this at home. You just squeeze it out into some boiling water and you've got stock. You can put these things back in the fridge. They will last until the expiry date. There's no preservatives in it. Doesn't need preserving. It's a stock made just like you would at home, but then we extract the water out of it. So it's real stock. And you know, like, have you seen that, uh, that Campbell stuff and that chef that endorses it? Do you reckon he came up with a recipe for that Australian salty water? You better not edit that in when you put that in. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. So, literally, I've just put one pack in there because there's a lot of water in there. And you mix it up and you've got stock. And it looks real, tastes real, is real. Happy days. Well, this box have to be here. Maybe we'll try to move that under there. Hopefully nothing goes out. Right, you've got a bag of chicken and I've got a bag of chicken. Actually, I, you know, I, went, I bought the chicken from Countdown. And I bought 800 grams of chicken thigh meat. You've all got the recipes and you can take notes as you go. Um, and I got it home and I opened some of the packets and they were off. It stunk. I couldn't believe it. So then I had some sausages on standby. So I cooked some sausages up. So your bag gets some sausages in it. So yours will be even better than mine probably. Because yeah, sure. now we need to get this thing going. So we're going to get that hot and we're going to get this one nice and hot but not too hot and we're cooking olive oil right now i am using lots of olive oil today you guys are going to be blown away by how much olive oil i use so i'm going to put half in of mine into the pan you're going to use that pan over there literally half of it so it's quarter of a cup of olive oil we're going to put this in later why are we using lots of olive oil right because it's really good for us and Kiwis don't have enough olive oil in their diet. And you've all heard me say it before, all right? The average Kiwi consumes 250 mils of olive oil a year. You guys consume more, but the average in the Mediterranean where they live longer, 25 liters a year. So we want it hot, but not so hot that it's smoking. And I forgot one really important bit. Because if you smoke it like that, you turn it into a carcinogenic oil. So my pan's a little bit hot. We opened up this kitchen this morning. Normally we'd be cooking on an induction cooktop, but it's broken. So that was a little bit of a exciting morning. Right, I need the Mexican seasoning. So what we're gonna do is have a bowl. I'll do my one first. There's yours, you're gonna put all of it in with your chicken. And basically I am going to put the chicken in here and I'm just gonna move it all around so this makes a lot, right? So I've said it makes enough for eight people, but that works out at 100 grams of chicken per person. So it's a rare, by the time everything else is in here, it's super, super generous. And we just mix that Mexican seasoning around there. See, you're coating all of that chicken. And now I'll get that back on the heat. And I'm gonna cook it in, in batches. Doesn't matter if it's not all coated. And I just want to seal it off a little bit, right? I'm not trying to cook it at this stage. I'm just going to seal it a little bit. 
I'll tell you what, why don't you have half of that and you could start on yours. This one, it, when you put it in, just check it starts to sizzle. Once it starts to sizzle, we can put the rest of that in. There you go. And now we'll go halves each on this one as well. So see how it's, well you guys can't see, but let me tell you, it's just sort of bubbling away here. It's not super hot. So it's just bubbling and I'm, turning, I'm not really looking to get any colour on it at this stage, but it's got all the seasoning on there. And you might even be able to start to smell it. It smells good already, right? So I'm just giving that a mix up. Here we go. Do you want to see? Do you want to see? There we go. So, you know, but see how it's just bubbling. It's not super, super hot. I'm not stewing it though, I'm frying it. Just lightly frying it. Okay. And then we're going to get that cooking. Have you had a flick through at the recipes of what I'm cooking? Yes. They are super, super yum and super healthy too. How did, who's going to buy a Thermomix that was here watching the Thermomix? Oh, nobody. <laughs> Simon, where are you? This is not good. There we go. So I just need something to pop the chicken in as it comes out. No, I need that. So we're just going to get something to put this chicken that is now cooked enough in there. So you might need a little bit more oil in that one. See, because I've still got plenty of, see how much oil I've got in here? So I literally put half of my oil in. And now I'll put the rest of this in here. There we go. So we're just sealing it off. And then we've got a whole bunch of other things that are going to go in. We've got a whole bunch of walnuts that are going to go in it, which is the really great tasting bite that you have when you bite into this once it's cooked. So you can, I, I cooked this dish the other night. What I did is I literally uh, got it all ready in the morning and then I came home that night and an hour before I wanted to cook it, I put it into the oven at 180 degrees. How's that um, garlic in the oven? <coughs> there we go. So see how now all that oil that was in there has now been absorbed? So that's all mine left. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little, because see the pan, how all the, a lot of the seasoning is in there. I'm just going to put some liquid in there. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the chicken and I'm going to mop it around and try and scrape all of that off. And then put that in with the chicken. So now the pan is basically clean, but look at all this flavour that is now coming out of that pan that is going in there. And that is one of the keys. Right, I'm done with that pan. Now I'm going to start with a casserole pot because this is what we're going to cook it in. Now I'm going to put the rest of the extra virgin olive oil in there. And I am going to put in some onions. And some onions right in front of me. So the onions are going in straight in and I've got some garlic cloves. Righto, you can pull that off and just pop that all in there. We'll get the tongs which are here. So we'll get so we're sealing all this chicken. Just put it down. Here we go. We're gonna go halves each on this. I'm sorry, this bit's taking a little bit longer because I want to cook enough so that you guys can all get to try it. Right, where's your Mexican seasoning? Yep, take it out, if you can. 
Oh, yeah. How's that date? I mean, for something so simple, right? So simple, but those done on the barbecue are just awesome. Okay, let's get it back on. Right, now. Yeah, you're going to do the same again. And we'll just try and turn that heat up a bit. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. So in here I've got the remaining remaining quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil and I've got one onion and I've got garlic cloves cut up in there. And I'm literally going to get it going and then I'm going to start getting everything else in. I've got chorizo. Okay, so chorizo you can buy at the supermarket and you'll have a look at all the preservatives on it, E numbers, not so good. This is, can I, can you bring me a bit of the chorizo so I can show them? It is made from the pork cheek and it comes from Spain. So this one is the real deal and I've just cut it into little pieces like that. See how big they are? Just little tiny pieces. We're going to get that in. There's a lot of smoked paprika in there with it. Also, I'm going to get one bell pepper, which I've cut into pieces. I've got rid of the seeds. I've got one bell pepper in there. Can you see there? The, can you literally can see the pieces of meat, right? The, the cheek that's in there. The pork cheek. So if you don't eat pork, you're in trouble today. All right, now I've got shiitake mushrooms. It's 100 grams of shiitake mushrooms, and I've just cut them up into chunks. They're going in, and now I've got a wooden spoon, you've got one there, and I've got a spatula, and we're just going to saute these off for about three minutes or so, just to soften things, and you'll notice as soon as you get the mushrooms in, they're like a little sponge, and they'll absorb all that extra virgin olive oil, and you can see now the pan is almost dry, it doesn't take long and everything is starting to sizzle away and we get a little bit of frying going on. That'll do nicely, so you just put all of those in there. Where's the rest of your olive oil? There it is. Where is your olive oil? Okay, just pour it all in there, that's it. Here we go. And now, I just want you to scrape that with your wooden spoon and get all that flavour off and then you can just pour it over the chicken there. What's that? Um, because absolutely no reason. That's a really good point. I could have just used the same, I should have just used the casserole pot, right? I wish I had a really technical idea. Apparently somebody's bought me a box of five ingredients I've got to cook. Who was that person? Yeah, you can leave now. <laughs> but I might take you on for the challenge. Maybe at the end you can bring it up and I'll do see what we can do, right? What's that? They're fresh shiitake mushrooms. Okay. Yep. Now... That's it. Now you need the rest of your olive oil in there. Now you need to get your garlic and all of that stuff in there, right? Just chuck it in, exactly. Here we go. So that's been on for a good three minutes and things have sweated down really nicely. There's loads of colour. It's looking good. I'm now going to put the rice in. I'm using proper cannaroli rice. Carnaroli rice, really, really good. And I measured it out perfectly in there. It's one cup of rice, so it's really good. There's your one there. So that's it. Now we'll just give that a little bit of a stir around. And as I said, all this part you could do in the morning or even the night before. Now I'm going to get all the chicken in there. And it goes with the juice. I am going to put a can of whole peeled tomatoes. We need more tomatoes in our life, don't we? Yes. 
There we go, one whole can going in. Those are just the whole peeled, and then I'll just rinse it out with a bit of the stock, because I don't want to leave any behind in there. There it goes. Just do me a checklist of what else I need. And I'm going to need lots of herbs, so... Yep, throw them in. Now, it's, it's bubbling away here. If I was going to cook it tonight, I would now turn the heat off and I would put everything else in. So what I'm going to do now is just pop in the walnuts. Quite a lot of walnuts. They're good for us. And I've got an extra one over there and I want to use it. Have you got, has he got, there should be, that's the extra, that's his. These are yours as well. So now I am going to do the stock. So it's 800 mils of stock. I've got a measuring jug somewhere. Or is it literally half, half each? Save measuring it. It's half, but I'll do it just to be sure. So I'll make a mess and pour it all over the place. Let's get 800 mils. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. That's your 800 mils there. The stock goes in. Now I'm going to need heaps of marjoram and stuff out of that box. So now you kind of put whatever herbs you can lay your hands on. Parsley. I've got some Italian chopped parsley. Italian leaf parsley in there. Quite a lot. And... I'm going to put some marjoram, I'm going to put some thyme in there. I hate cooking on gas because when you spill it, you know you've got to clean it up afterwards. So I've just got this straight out of the garden and we've got some of this. If you're buying anything at the end from the shop, they'll give you a little pack of herbs to take home. Yeah, this is... Yeah, and we'll go halves each on this. So the more herbs you can throw in here, the better. Sean could talk all day long why herbs are so good for us, eh? Hey, so are you waiting to come and talk to everybody? Are you going to come and talk? Aren't you awesome watching Dad when you could be playing with friends? It'd be way more fun to play with friends, right? Are you going to come and talk to everybody? Do you want to tell them something? You do. You'll have to have a big, loud voice. So come up here. Someone will... You can chop that up for me. I'll lift you up. What are you going to do? You have to have a big, loud voice. Are you going to go all shy? Go on, big, loud voice. What are you going to say? <laughs> I thought, why don't you tell them one of your jokes? Okay. Go on then. Big, loud voice. What's your joke? What does the matter? What does the maths teacher have at home? Any teachers here? <laughs> One teacher. What do they have at home? Um, takeaways. Takeaways. <laughs> oh, a round of applause for that, huh? That was awesome. Good job. Good job. Righto, let's get this off. And we're just going to put loads of herbs in and the salt. How much salt? I'm using Murray River salt and I've got, I've got iodized salt to go around for you to try. And I want you to taste the Murray River first. Take a little pinch and taste it. And then I want you to taste the iodized salt afterwards and see the difference. I need a measuring spoon. And I'm pretty sure it was. So all my recipes are done using Murray River salt. And there's a method of my madness is because you might buy it, right? Because if you do two teaspoons of iodized salt in this dish, it will not taste great. But two teaspoons of Murray River salt will be the right amount. How are you going? That's looking good. So now... All that remains is I'm going to take half these herbs and put them in. See, it's like a, 
good bunch of herbs in there, right? And then it's just going to be a case of mixing it up. Thank you. So just give it a little mix, and then it's into the oven. And anywhere, because it's hot like this, it'll probably take about 45, 50 minutes. So right at the end of this demo, you will be able to have a taste and see what you think. But give it a good stir around so we've got the salt through there, the rice is in there, and you can see the colours are really good. So you can start, you can get all those herbs in, Tim. And I'm just going to whistle this around so you can see. And it's quite oily, right? There's half a cup of oil in there. But that is the key. It's going to be flavour. If you use cheap lo loopy olive oil or whatever, it'll taste terrible. Come on, Simone, let's see what they look like. What they? Does this look any good? Have a smell. Right? It's got lots of colour, right? It's really runny. And it's going to be just packed full of flavour. Yeah, this is your one, Sean. But, you know, if you've got, like, I said eight people, but I reckon you'd easily feed ten people with that. And the flavours of the chorizo and the shiitake mushrooms and everything is going to be great And that. So I'm going to get that in the oven. Doesn't need a lid. So in the oven that goes and we'll forget about it. Okay, Tim, how are you going? Yours is looking good. Now you have to go and show everybody like this. See if it looks any different. It's amazing. If you get 10 cooked, go on, go on, do Show off, brother. Show off. <laughs> oh, yeah. If we got, actually, we'll put some saucies in yours. Now yours is the Rolls Royce one. Excellent. These are the sausages from Mangawai Butcher. Uh, there's two different types in here. Hey, put it down. Give it a good mix up. So it's a great way to use leftover sausages, right? And you could do it just with sausages if you want, instead of the chicken thigh. Don't use chicken breast, use chicken thigh. But these sausages are not full of rubbish and they're fantastic on the barbecue, but they're going to be delicious in this as well. There we go. No. And... Okay, can I show them the garlic? All right, so, question over here. What's the question? Why thighs and not breasts? Why thighs? Look at my thighs. They're beautiful. <laughs> Breast has got no fat in it. Fat's flavour. Who, I mean, chicken breast, like you've got to cook it absolutely perfectly, don't you? And then leave it to rest so it's nice and moist. But chicken thigh has much more flavour. And it's like when you cook steak on the barbecue or you cook chicken on the barbecue. It's even better when you cook it on the bone. But chicken, boneless chicken thighs are easy to buy. There's no skin. You just chop them up. They're cheaper and they've got more flavour. So you're saying then that me taking all the fat off the chicken thighs, I'm doing the wrong thing? Yeah, no, leave it on. I mean, unless you get a thigh that's really fat then maybe you could remove a bit, but you know. Okay, because I'd stand for hours taking the fat off. Oh, what do you reckon, Sean? <laughs> come up here, come on. <laughs> What's your name again? Helen. Helen. Helen takes all the fat off the chicken thigh meat. Spends hours doing it. I reckon well, a little bit. Uh, you know, a few <laughs> minutes, right? <laughs> there you go, add more. All right, so you've done... Hey, round of applause for Tim. Round of applause. Take a seat, mate. You're off the hook. All right, we need to uh, find a little bit of room here that's hot. Don't go picking it up.
So there's 60 people here, right? So it'll be interesting to see if two lots of that manage to get you all a little taste of it. I'm sure there will be enough in there. Now, I'm going to send this salt around. You've had a date. Now, first of all, I want you to just, there's a teaspoon there, just take a little bit of the salt and then put it in the palm of your hand like this. Who would have thought I'd be telling, teaching people how to taste salt? But like, you know, just a little bit like that and then it's crunchy. And I'm talking just a little bit, right? And then do the same thing with the iodized salt, but take a lot less is my suggestion. So we'll start here and go that way, right? There you go. Because it's the small things in cooking that make a difference. Who uses Himalayan salt? Who uses uh, Maldon salt? Who uses Marlboro salt? Marlboro salt is uh, manufactured, by the way. It's not real flake salt. Who uses just normal iodized salt normally? Who uses herb salt? Yeah, the herb salt is awesome, yeah. That's one of our biggest sellers here is herb salt. Now follow around with that. Are oh, you you're going that way? Okay, right, forget what I said. Who <laughs> is <laughs> Murray River? Right, Fern, you need to stand at the door. If they don't buy a bag of Murray River on the way out, then <laughs> kick them in the thighs. <laughs> Well, you tell me what you think. Right, what are we going to make now? Should we do a edamame guacamole? Oh, no, we're going to make prawns. Prawns. Come on, Sandy, come and cook some prawns with me. And then another pan, please. All right. We'll do this big bowl here. So I've got uh, a couple of bags. I've got one bag, which is prawn meat. Which side do you want to be on? So I've got one bag of prawn meat and then one bag of prawns which has still got a little bit of the shell on the end. It costs, one bag was $10, one bag is $15. And I reckon it's going to be enough for you all to taste one but in a delicious Indian sauce. So the first thing you can do is, this is Sandy by the way, and Hi, my God you're looking smoking hot. Is your husband here? No. Oh. <laughs> can you tell them how much weight you've lost? Um, well, you don't have to if you don't want yeah, to. Yeah, I can. Last March I was 83.2 and um, bumped into Simon on my walk and his work colleagues, I think it was, said, just come over the road and talk to Simon because I'm with the Women's Institute and I wanted Simon to come and chat with us. They can't hear you loud, loud. I wanted Simon to come and chat with our Women's Institute group and he told me he was very busy and I said I'm sure you are but <laughs> come and talk to us lovely ladies and I joined his four wheels of the house and I'm now 66 kilos. Woohoo! And I feel amazing and just the whole attitude of everything, life, you just feel fantastic. So whoever's not on it, you should be. Mm -hmm. um, I, Praise oh. Simon a lot, and thank you, Simon. Oh, thank you. Yep. Look, man, you are looking wow. Holy thank moly. You. Right, so Indian seasoning, because we're going to have Indian prawns. So you just put as much or as little in as you like. I'm putting quite a lot in. I don't know, probably three tablespoons. But it's in, the, okay, call it four tablespoons. <laughs> it would have been, I reckon, no, 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 no three, because it's the, the, we don't fill these up. There's no money in filling them up. <laughs> so you can now just toss them and you could use my Moroccan seasoning or the Indian or the Mexican and in fact I'm going to put some more in I'm going to put the whole canister in it's for 60 people though it's only $7 come on it's not bad five have you? you buy five tins at once oh yeah there you go so I'm going to toss them around in there now you could just cook them straight like this on the barbecue they're great if you cook them straight like this on the barbie. I'm going to cook anything on here. Right, let's get you some heat going. Now, we're going to get some olive oil in. I'm using this New Zealand loop line olive oil. So don't be shy, right? And we're not going to be able to cook all this at the same time. Here's some uh, 
things here and let's put an apron on you so you don't splat up. All right. Yeah, so just, are you okay with doing this? Because yeah. it w could splatter a little bit. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to get the prawns in and I'm going to have to do them in batches because I don't want the pan to be too crowded otherwise I won't end up frying them. Do we have by chance another pair of tongs? I bought a pair of tongs. So just wait until it gets a bit hotter and just... So you can just toss them around. How do you toss them around, right? It's like push and lift, push and lift. Normally about now I like spill them everywhere, but... You don't have to do that, do you, Simon? No, you don't have to do that. Now we're going to get some white wine in. And you've got a recipe for exactly the right amount, but I'm just guessing. <laughs> Try one, see if it sizzles. Now you give it a shake round, and now same deal, we're going to collect all that spice that's on the bottom of the pan. And this is where I'm going to need some water and a little bit of stock. Do you want me to put more in? No, no, about a little bit more. That's enough, that's enough. Stand back. So just keep giving them a shuffle Fine. until you think that they're done. So prawns cook fairly quickly, right? And what we want to do is cook the alcohol out of the wine. And if you don't think you've got enough in, just put a little bit more in. Alright, and we need to get you hotter here. Okay. Are we going to use chicken stock? I normally use veggie stock, but we'll use chicken stock today. Just... If you had some fish stock, it would be great, but it doesn't really matter. I just want to use a little, and you could just use water. Got the um, ladle. Come up here and ask, I can't hear you. So I can't hear you. Yeah. What could you substitute the prawns for? Because somebody like me can't have any of this food. It will be hot and, and just covered in my Right, well, you're very difficult. Um, so, chicken would be great in here. You could do courgettes like this. You could do mushrooms with Indians, mushrooms exactly the same way. It really wouldn't matter what you did with us. Can you have the white wine in the stock? <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. So put it down. There you go. Now, we want that to bubble. See how this is bubbling away? Now, we're, this is all going to be filmed so and on a YouTube thing, so you'll be able to see it. I'm going to get a little bit of lemon zest in there. Well, this is actually limes off my tree and if you can take the lid off the there you go and you do the same thing another lemon lime and we're going to get some lime juice in there okay i'll show you how to do that now just i'm going to get some butter in now these prawns are cooked watch i'm going to put like couple of tablespoons of butter in, if that, probably there's one tablespoon gone in now, it's just soft butter, I'm dropping it in. And when the butter's just about melted, any chopped parsley, I might have a little bit of chopped parsley, I'm going to put a bit of chopped parsley on it, but you could be doing exactly the same with the mushrooms, wedges of courgettes, pretty much any vegetable. So that's just about melted, so I'm just shuffling it around. And now I've literally got a creamy sauce. Spoon. And I'll come around and show you. But look, look how it's like it's really creamy, right? So so easy, right? It smells good, but you can see it's literally a creamy sauce now. So you could do a fillet of fish like this, right? And there you could pan fry the fillet of fish, but you can see it literally looks like I've got cream in there, right? 
Yeah. But you, you'd swear there's cream in there, and you'll get to taste it in a minute, and you'll be able to see what you think. Okay. When you guys, where's Megan? And you could make this into like a big spoon, sweaty. How about I serve that up? Or, or I need. Uh, this is. Oh, so they all get one prawn. One prawn. Something to garnish with this. Yeah, need garnishing for this. Just look. This is for YouTube, so I want it. Okay. Um, just hand fry. I'm just going to try and plate one up nicely here. I want a nice garnish like your flowers or ditch that one. So I've just got an edible flower here. I'm just going to pop that on it. Um, and it's and a little bit of parsley on top. And suddenly I've got a really, I'm, I'm not putting much on this because the thing is I want you to eat them, right? It's not, a, so this is going to, I'll just leave this up here. So if somebody wanted to see how you could turn it into a little entree, now I need to cook more. Get a pan on, get a pan on. Okay, Fern, here's some to be plated up. How did, how did, um, how did yours turn out, Sandy? Oh. Okay. There we go. Right. Let me have a crack at another one real quick. Can you bear with me? Because I want you guys all to get some. So, some, again, olive oil on the pan. Does anybody want to come up here and do one? Does anybody want to do this? Hazel does. You know, you've got a nice dress on and I don't have a um, thing. So, again, it's just the prawns go in. As soon as I get a little bit of heat on here, Get everything up for the next one, and I'll need a blender. Next, I'm going to make the edamame guacamole. Is what I'm going to do next. Uh, pro probably about a ladle, but you could just put water in. I'm just flashing it up because I just think it adds more flavour. I didn't actually even taste that. It'll be interesting to see what it tastes like. I'll, <laughs> I'll taste the next one. It's very unusual for me not to taste food. Let me tell you. All right. Here we go. So that's gone in. As soon as I get a little bit of cranking heat, maybe it's a bit hotter over here on this. So edamame beans are really good. Do you want to talk about edamame beans, how good they are for a minute? Yep. Everybody probably knows edamame beans, and I've got a packet here. I bought them from the supermarket, frozen. And the beans are like this. I put them in Hazel's lunch. You can also buy them in the pod. And if you had some miso, you could literally put some of these beans into a pot of water with a little bit of salt, three minutes, strain them off, some water in a pan, a little bit of miso paste, and then throw the beans in and do exactly what I did with the prawns, finish it with some butter, and there'll be in a miso butter. You could put a little bit of chili in there if you like chilies. You talk about how good they are. There you go. Fantastic. Yeah. Big loud voice though, because people can't hear down the back. Did you did you try the um those, those ones? Are they all good? I might need more because I'm not getting much lemon out of these. Yeah, you could get some close-up shots of this one, so I get the wine in. I need to get some zest. Mm -hmm. 
Can I have the blender here? So you need a food processor for this next one. One little thing I have done is I put some garlic in a little tin foil pack and garlic cloves and with just a little bit of olive oil. You see it's in the recipe and I roasted it at 200 degrees, 220 degrees. So they're really roasted, they've got some colour on them. You could eat them like that with a little bit of that Murray River salt over the top and they'd be delicious. And garlic is really, really good for us, right? What did everybody think of the salt? Could you see the difference between the, the Murray River and the iodized? Would anybody change to Murray River? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of parsley in there. Yeah, clear that. What, what Sean just said, you probably can't hear him. He's very quietly spoken. If you've got any health questions for him, wave him over and he'll come and talk to you privately if you want any questions. <laughs> Normally he tells everybody I'm single, so, you know, like, and tries to hitch me up, but. <laughs> got this other pan here for more prawns to go out. And if I could have the pan and the spoon back, yeah, so you take that, that's the, okay. I need all the stuff here, so I don't want to have it all here. Okay, we are making, kale is super good for us, right? Most people hate it and on its own. This is a really good way to get some kale into your diet without actually sitting there and eating kale. Most people put it in smoothies, but really, really good for us. So I've got a large leaf and I've washed it. And there's some in the shop if you're... Um, that you can take home out of my garden, but make sure you wash it. I haven't washed the stuff in the shop. So I'm chopping it up roughly. Let's give me a line like this so I can see exactly. I don't, do I need that for it? Okay, so into a food processor is going the kale, and I'm doing a double mix here. I'm going to put two avocados in. And I'll just show you one interesting thing with an avocado if you want to do, because they're so good at this time of year. And you peel it, and you can make them look pretty sexy very easily by cutting it. So I've sort of reasonably successfully peeled it in half. And then if I just come along here like this and just slice it like that, 
and there's a quarter, and then just squash it down, you get a nice fan, which looks nice on the plate, yeah? You do it like that, really easy to do. But we're not going to bother with that, we're just going to put it straight into the <laughs> dish, into the blender. So I scoop that in there. And I've cooked the edamame beans in water for about three minutes. If it was five minutes, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And if it was two minutes, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I'm going to show you how I would plate this up. But you could have poetic license to how you serve this. I'm going to serve it with some burrata. And where is it? The stracciatella. Okay. There we go. So two avocados, but normally it's just one in your recipe. I'm trying to get enough so you can all have a little taste. Some extra virgin olive oil again. And quite a lot, two tablespoons going in. The edamame beans are going in. And I want a little bit of sriracha. This is this uh, Tabasco sriracha. It's just recently become available in New Zealand. Normally I'd measure it, but we're not going to bother about that. We're just going to put a little squirt in there. And some lemon juice. Recipe here. There we go. Lemon juice goes in. Now, I'm going to shut up for a little bit and let this puree up. And I really want to mix it up because we've got that kale in there. Got pepper and... So I put half, uh, in the recipe I think I tell you to put half a teaspoon of Murray River in, but I'm putting a teaspoon in because it's double the mix, and some ground black pepper. Spatula. Thank you. Scrape the sides down, and you can see it's got a great colour, smells fantastic. And I'm going to have one of those plates over there, the same one as before. Have you seen these new cherry tomatoes in a vine? They're growing just in uh, Drury, that you can buy in the supermarket. Just going to cut some wedges of that. No, the other one. And burrata is like a mozzarella ball. And when you cut into it, it's quite spectacular in actual fact. So then you take it out of the water, and it's like this beautiful ball. And when you break it, if you watch this, it's like full of cream. It's like this beautiful creaminess inside. And in our house we call it spaghetti. Here's the inside of it. It's kind of like almost spaghetti. Uh, if I pull it out of here, kind of looks like spaghetti, right? In the middle. So that's made from the cream that they make mozzarella with, buffalo mozzarella. This is uh, made in New Zealand, it's a beautiful product. I need the other plate now, I messed that up. No, no, I want the other one of that. Burrata. Okay, so let's have a little taste of this. Fresh, it's lemony. I get the kale coming through, the avocado's just there, the olive oil, 
and I think the seasoning is perfect, and it's got a little bit of punch from that sriracha, just a little bit. And it's delicious, so I'll need a bowl to put this into. And, not, there's not a big one? No. Okay. Um, I want a big one. And is there another burrata, or is that the only one? Okay. That's the only, I thought I had two burratas, so I was showing you what it looked like in the middle, but we're going to, and I'll need the lettuce, the whole lettuce. So I'm going to make a wrap out of this. So I did this at home the other night, and literally I put a um, piece of iceberg lettuce down. Iceberg lettuce is in the in there, if, you, if I can have that. And I'm going to serve it with the iceberg lettuce. I'm going to show you how I would serve it. Oh, this is how the burrata comes in a, in a bag like that, and that ball is inside. You are all going to get some of the middle with it, which is this stuff here, which is like really rich and yummy. It's really good. So's Christmas. I just want a lettuce leaf and show you how I would garnish it. Awesome, thank you very much. We don't by chance have another tablespoon. So I'm just going to take a piece of um, iceberg lettuce and in that we're not doing um, you know, bread so much these days. We've made a chickpea bread for a white bean dip. We made a chickpea bread for you to try this morning. Super easy, you can see that the recipe is there. That's what I want. And then I'm just gonna take some of this and pop it in a spoon, like a big tablespoon, and then I'll put another tablespoon on top, and I'm just going to turn it into what they call a quenelle. Nice shape like that. See, it's like a lovely quenelle shape. And I'm going to put that as my stage center on the plate. Then I'm going to take some of the burrata, and this is where I'm going to need some balsamic. Um, put a little pile of that burrata on there. I'm going to put, and was, what about a little bit of the cherry tomato on top? This is the one... Uh, this is the one Simon, if you were at his last class, was talking about, the Saporoso. I'm going to drizzle some of this around it. This over ice cream, over strawberries on summer, over a salad with mozzarella cheese or burrata is super, super delicious. The basil. You can use whatever herb you like. I'll put a flower on there. I've got all these edible flowers growing in the garden, but it, they do make things look kind of pretty and they're kind of fun on the plate. And basil and burrata is kind of like a marriage in heaven. So I'll just stick a little bit of that on the side there. Now I'm going to get some Pucara lemon oil. You could use just extra virgin olive oil. We're going to drizzle some of that around the plate. And then we've got a, a delicious starter, but the key that goes on is just a little sprinkling of the May River salt. Otherwise, the lettuce, when you wrap it up, is so much and it, you, it sort of becomes a little bit watery, but you change it by having that little crunch of the salt. Does that look sexy? All right, let me go and have a quick... Actually, you can go around and show everybody, just keep the plate nice and everything. Does that look pretty? And you, like the other day, we just literally rolled it up and I said, get your laughing gear around that, it should dribble down your chin, and like, it was really good. Really good. Anyway, so show it to them that way, because that's how you present it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm good. What are we going to do next? Let's do a chickpea dip, right? 
So this chickpea dip is a little bit different. We're going to do a chickpea dip, dip, and then we're going to put, we'll just put the recipe there. We're going to do a salad to go on top. Man, you're unbelievable standing there watching me. Aren't you, as Indy, where are they? Do you want, want to play with them? Am I more, am I more interesting? Oh, man, how cool is she? I wish I, has, have we got another chair that Hazel could sit on or something? So we're doing a Moroccan chickpea dip. And it'll come as no surprise that I'm using my Moroccan seasoning, but there's, in fact, you can, it's very hard to buy apart from the deli here. But you can, you can buy Moroccan seasonings in every, any supermarket. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. Just need the, the rest of the blender. Again, this is really easy to make. And the cool thing about this in winter, you could heat this dip up and use it like a puree instead of like a mashed potato. If you miss mashed potato and you're not doing mashed potato as much anymore, then you could, um, you could actually heat this puree up. So, you know, cauliflower purees are pro popular, but this chickpea, well, you're going to taste it soon, and fern, as soon as you've done that, you can show them in there what it looks like. Take the lemon oil, Bex or Pratima, take the lemon oil. So, thanks. I want them to do miniature ones of those, little tiny ones, so they can all get a taste. It's key that a little bit of that Murray River goes on top. Okay? Awesome. So tahini, you can buy in any supermarket. So we're getting tahini in, we're getting chickpeas in. I've drained off the liquid of the can of chickpeas. It's just a good old can of chickpeas going in there. Because there's lots of you, I'm going to double the recipe again. And I'm going to get the tahini in. There goes the tahini. So again, really good for you, right? Sesame seeds, like this is health, health, health for you. And chickpeas, there are so many health benefits from the chickpeas. Thea, how are you going? You good? There we go. Now we're gonna get some of the, I've kept some of the juice from the chickpeas is gonna go in here, because I want the consistency to be right. You've got the recipe there. So the juice, some, kept some of the juice of the chickpeas. Why have I got, uh, oh, one's for the salad. That salad, right? Okay. And I'm going to get some extra virgin olive oil in there. And I'm going to get some Moroccan seasoning in. It's a tablespoon for each mix. I'm putting two tablespoons in there. orange zest not the orange juice just the zest of the orange and we get the oil out of that which is what's going to give it a really lovely flavor so when you do a use a microplane like this you start at one end and you roll the orange as you're grating it rolling the orange or lemon whatever you're doing start at one end and then that way when you finish you've got most of the zest you don't want to get too much of the pith so you put it down on one end and roll it as you turn, as you're grating. And then pretty much most of it's gone, right? Give that a little crack and I've got an extra one here. That's a grapefruit. Okay, you have some grapefruit in there. <laughs> right, that's going to be good, right? Lemon or grapefruit or orange, but all, all same, same. It's going to add a lovely flavour to it. Never done it with grapefruit before, that'll be interesting. I'm sure it'll be good. Right, have I got everything in there? I'm pretty sure I do. We're gonna give that a good blend up. Now we're gonna make the salad. So, lots of chopped parsley. I've used Italian leaf chopped parsley. So, you know, good, good little, plenty of it. Again, you've got the recipe. 
and some cherry tomatoes or big tomatoes that have been cut into quarters. I need one in there, don't I? Did I put lemon juice? Do I put lemon juice in here? No. Lemon juice in. But this is the salad one. Two tablespoons, so one tablespoon for this. I've used lime juice today, it's a bit like my grapefruits. <coughs> so the salad has some red onion which is finely chopped up in it. Hey, how what were the prawns like? Yeah. They good? Easy to do, right? And you could use the Moroccan seasoning if you don't like. Indian and do it exactly the same way. Now some lemon juice going in, some Murray River salt goes in here, <coughs> and of course some extra virgin olive oil. Lots of it. And you can't blend that stuff too much, right? You're all thinking he's forgotten about that. But the more you blend it up, the smoother it will be. Now this is just a great salad on its own, right? You don't, I mean, don't even need to do the dip. And super good for you. All that parsley, lots of parsley in there, right? Um, we'll put a bit of pepper in, you don't have to. A little bit of cracked pepper, and I'm going to put some extra virgin olive oil in some more. And it's, it soaks it up. Like if you look in here, let me just come around real quick. You can see that that oil has been soaked up. It's dry at the bottom. You saw I put a lot in, right? But it but looks like it's going to be a tasty salad. And all that olive oil has been, see, it's pretty much soaked it all up. You good? Yep, I'm good. Sure? Yes, why? What do you like at cooking omelettes? I can cook an omelette. Oh, you can cook an omelette? Well, you're not good. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> so, should we have an omelette competition no, then? No. no. I can cook an omelette like a normal food. So see how it's pretty much soaked most of that liquid up, hasn't it? See, it's pretty sort of dry in there, but it's going to be... It's going to be really good. Yeah. The what's that? Oh, yeah, the other thing is still blending. Thank you. Just in the nick of time. Thanks, Hazel. All right. So. Oh, this is really good. I absolutely love that. So, I'm going to put this on a long plate like that. I'm going to take a big spoon of it. And this is what I did the other night. And, you know, I'd never done this until I thought, you know, I need to come up with something healthy using something canned, inexpensive, and... Um, I, this is how I plated it the other night. Do you like my Briscoe's plates, by the way? The price is still on this one. <laughs> Holy hell, that's expensive. That's why you go when they do those sales, isn't it? <laughs> so just do like a bit of a stripe down the plate. And then we will come along here. And we will now... Yeah. And I just put the salad over the top, like that. And the other night I drizzled some of the lemon oil on it, which was really good. But I am just going to drizzle some extra virgin olive oil because the... And that's it. And I just put that in the middle of the table but I put um, some extra salad because I've done double the amount of salad so you guys could get. But I put 
salad in the middle of the table, like that. Can you just, uh, oh, well, I just want everybody to see it close up. But go and sh show them real quick close up. Because I think that's, you know, a different way to serve a dip. But remember that puree, and you're going to get to taste it shortly with the, with the dip. The puree is, uh, if you warm that up, you know, a piece of fish on top. Even you could have served those prawns on top of it. Would have, been, would have been really good. Or even a piece of chicken done on the barbecue. It's just different. But wait until you taste it. it is, I think it's seriously, seriously yummy. Oh, and that, that's the other thing I'd put on. I forgot I had them out. Pine, just to sprinkle a few pine nuts over the top. will make it even better, right? So you get that little crunch. Okay, you've got to roll it up and like just try it and see what you think. The pine nuts, yeah. yeah. I've just, if I had time, I would toast them. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't, uh, didn't quite get to it. Okay, so we're going to try. So this is what you, you're just doing the little uh, thing. So I'll, I'll, Megan, don't run away. Don't. This is Megan, by the way, everyone. She's the one that's making it all happen for us, or well, one of them. So just a little bit of that. A little drizzle of olive oil, take some pine nuts, so put a cut, like you've got enough there to put a pine nut on each one. Hey, shall leave this one up here for later. Oh, and the these are panoli nuts from the South Island of New Zealand. You can buy the imported Chinese ones from the supermarket. They're generally rancid, um, but the panoli nuts from New Zealand, like anything good, cost, the, unfortunately they cost a lot more. Uh, we tried to get some in for today so we would have some to sell, but unfortunately the courier didn't make it, uh, so they'll probably arrive Monday. Okay, we're going to make a white bean dip, just using a can of white beans. The Akaroa salmon arrived today, which we're going to use. Oh, should we, can we show them the, the ham? Can we bring the ham? We've got a whole half ham cooking for you. At the end. So at the end we've got a little bit of Prosecco and we've got some ham and so you can sort of say hi to one another. Yes. Come on Sandy, stand up, listen to Sandy. She's got It is really good. So it comes from Akaroa salmon. It's the last salmon farm in New Zealand that is predominantly owned by New Zealanders, just about the Chinese own most of all the other salmon farms. It is beautiful salmon and I'm going to serve that on top of the white bean dip with the little chickpea pancake. Shall I make a chickpea pancake? And have they got the ham coming? You'll have to bring it out. Make sure you've got hot, like dry tea towels, Ross. And I'll have the I'm going to have the non-stick one I'm going to use for the... So, the, I, we'd never made this before, but it, of course, Sawati's from India, and she's made a bit of chickpea stuff in her time, right? And I had chickpea flour. We were going to make the broccoli bread. Has anybody seen the broccoli bread that I do, the broccoli toast? Um, but we didn't have any. I didn't have the ingredients for it, so... We made this chickpea flour, it's uh, a couple of cups of chickpea flour, water, um, some onion, put up here, Ross, up here. And, and, and uh, my, my Italian seasoning in here. So you'll get to try it so they could uh, yeah, start warming them up, I guess. I've got to make the dip yet. but So we thought we'd do a ham because we're selling hams this year and I wanted to do a different... Um, a different crust. So in my cookbook I got crystallized ginger and I cut it up into bits and I put a hole in it and I push the crystallized ginger into the fat and then I put the cloves in and then I do a, uh, a passion fruit I got I like whiskey who likes whiskey 
All right. So, me too. So, I got passion fruit puree, which we import from France. You can buy one cup like this if you want to buy it. And then I get two tablespoons of this beautiful hot whiskey mustard. And I know that, that be, we've just got them in and they're selling like hotcakes. People just love it. So two tablespoons of that, and that's probably a little bit much. Um, and maybe we could send this round somehow for you guys to have a taste of it. And you just mix this up. And just before I was about to cook, Sawadi made me a little dish, and we'd made some of this up to go on here. So she got some lettuce, some of the smoked salmon that arrived this morning from Makaroa, and she used the ham glaze, the whiskey mustard passion fruit glaze in my salad of smoked salmon. Made the most, there, there it is, there's a vinaigrette, just like that, all ready to go. And that's, that's what we have painted this ham in and basting it. So maybe we can send this around. If everybody had a teaspoon, they could all have a little, well, that spoon they could put a little, I know I keep throwing stuff at them. And Ross, you could come and grab this and put it back in the oven. So we're selling hams for Christmas. You can pre-order them. The Mangawai Butcher do them for us. So if they're selling and we deliver them to you, I think. Do we deliver them, Fern? Fern? <laughs> Fern? Do we deliver the hams or what? how's the deal with the ham? We deliver that. What else do I need to tell them about the ham? I got the. Oh. Well, you'll get to try it at the end, and you can decide what you think. But I think putting the crystallised ginger pieces into it is a novel idea. That's not too hot. Oh, yeah. The boys want to take Sawadi home. The girls always want to take Ross home. <laughs> Ross does all the deliveries. He'll come to your door. <laughs> is that all right, Michelle? <laughs> That's his wife down the back. <laughs> All right. Okay, white bean dip. So I need to strain these off. So I've got a can of white beans. And I'm just going to get rid of all the juice out of those. These are cannellini beans. So just strain the juice off. Excuse me doing this, but um, I do have a rubbish bin here. <laughs> It is it. Okay, and I've got the roasted garlic. So I've got two of the roasted garlic cloves going in. I've got the can of cannellini beans going in. I've got, um, wasn't I doing double the mix? Or I've already made it. Oh yeah, I made one this, I made one this morning for you guys, sorry. Just brain not engaged there. Um, a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. I'm not using this olive oil because I all want you to buy a five litre when you leave. <laughs> I'm really not. The flavour, olive oil is key and we don't cook enough with it. And I've tried to show today that everything has got lots of olive oil in it. That's how we get it into our diet. That's a healthy fat. And I'm getting some Mexican seasoning because I'm making a Mexican one. So I'm putting a Mexican seasoning in that one there. See? See here? See like that? <laughs> it was, look, ch check out how big I was on that. I walked in here and they put those up from my old cookbook the other day. It's like, whoa. Okay. So I need some lemon juice. So I'm just going to roll the lemon a little bit. Whoa. Squash it in half, why don't I? Can you juice me some lemon, Swati? So whenever it gets hard, you just ask Swati to do it. <laughs> so I want um, a tablespoon of lemon and I want some lemon zest. So getting some lemon zest in there. And then it's just going to be a case of puree it all up. But whilst that's happening, I'm going to make one of these pancakes. What's that? Oh, thanks. So I'm just going to pour some of this pancake batter in, and it's better if you make them right at the time and eat them, and you can turn them into wraps. So I would, I'll tell you what Hazel's going to get in her, for her lunch, I'm going to make one of these chickpea wraps, 
and I'm going to put the white bean dip in there, and I'm going to, or one of the dips, she likes all of the dips, but I'll put the white bean dip in, I'll put some strips of cucumber, some strips of carrot, and I'll roll it up, and it'll be a really cool lunch. But it would also be a cool lunch for me too, don't you think? I mean, it would be good. So this chickpea thing is good for us, right? This is a bread that's yummy, and you're going to get to try it soon. If I actually make a dip. Here we go. Why is that not working? There we go. Puree that up. I'm going to save that for Hazel's lunch. Now I need a plate to... Uh, and I'll get the sauce on for the mushroom next. Um, yeah, that'll look cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate this like an entree. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I haven't done it before. <coughs> and I'm going to use the smoked salmon. What did everybody think of the wraps, the, the first one? Edamame guacamole, okay? Right, look at this beautiful piece of salmon. Take the skin off there. That's ready for me there. There we go. Cool. And this is a pretty fail safe recipe. Doesn't need anything. It's good. But I'm going to puree it up just a wee bit more. I'm going to need some garnish stuff, nice garnish, anything over there, maybe a nice bit of lettuce or something. I'm also going to put some on this, these crackers, these Danish crackers, there's all sorts of different flavours, so I'll plate one up on a cracker, so in case you don't want to be messing around with these pancakes, but you know, it looks like a... and I'll need another plate to do this one on. Oh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Right, so I've just, I'm gonna start building this. So I've put the pancake on there. I'm gonna put a little bit of lettuce on. I'm gonna put this beautiful piece of Akaroa salmon on. And then I'm gonna take some of this dip I'll put some of that on there. Just going to smear it around a wee bit. Now I'm going to drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on here. You think I've all got virgin mad, don't you, with this olive oil stuff? Here we go, a little bit of olive oil over there. And now I will take whatever I can to garnish this little... edible flowers on there. Little bit of basil because I can, and I'm done. Okay, so I think you've got quite a little pretty little starter. So literally to make the, uh, the chickpea, it's just you put all the ingredients into a bowl, mix it up, and then cook it in a non-stick pan. And you don't actually need any olive oil in the non-stick pan. So I think when you get all these flavours together, because it's got the Mexican seasoning in there, it's going to be nice and spicy, a little bit of spice to it. You'll get the crunch from the lettuce. What did everybody think of the uh, passion fruit and whiskey mustard glaze? Good? And good for a dressing, right? A little bit of kick. You could put a bit more salmon on there. I've been a bit miserable, really. Chickpeas high in carbs. No, there's a lot of... They are high in carbs, but it's like lentils are high in carbs, but the fibre content is even higher. So for tw I think for 40 grams of lentils, 24 are carbs, of which 16 are fibre, I think. Sean, 
Got a question up here if you've got a minute. Okay, so now I'll just do the cracker. Have we got something I'll put it on and then you have a bean dip left? Beautiful. <coughs> the question's up here about chickpeas. So I'm going to put this one on a cracker. Just see what I can do. I don't know what it'll look like, but I'm pretty sure it'll be all right. Yep. Don't know if this is such a good idea, to be honest. Looks a bit average, don't you think? <laughs> and just a little drizzle of olive oil over. Does that look right from there? Can you just whistle? Uh, okay. So I've done a little. I've done a little one of those Danish crackers with it on. I'll put it up the front here so you can see. If you didn't want to make the chickpea bread, so there's another version of it there. Mushrooms. Yes, the timer for the has gone off. Oh, well, this has been uh, going for an hour. So I've been talking a bit more than I thought. I'm going to need this uh, mixer, aren't I? So we're going to pull it out. I'm going to leave Tim's and then you can pull your one out, mate. Ooh, how good does this look? You can't see it, right? Uh, I need a plate of some sort. I need that plate there. I need a plate. Okay, so I'm just. I mean, I've got some asparagus and I've got some prosciutto, and I just want to try one other thing that I'm going to get organised, ready to do. Just an idea that you could do on the barbecue. So to, I've just blanched that asparagus. I'm going to put the prosciutto down. Again, no preservatives, just salt and pork. You can eat it raw like that, but the key is when you have prosciutto or serrano ham is to let it get to room temperature. Because see this fat on here? That cold is not nice, but at room temperature it's good. So I am going to put the two pieces there together. And I'll take some, a little bunch of asparagus and I just blanch them very quickly in some boiling salted water, then refresh them in some cold water. I'll take a little bunch like this, and I will roll them up like a sushi roll. And then I would go to the barbecue and cook them in a parcel like that. You know when you're barbecuing and the asparagus goes down the grill, or the beans or things disappear and you're trying to fish them out? Here's a way to, to cure that problem, right? So that is going to go in the oven. What did I want that plate for now? I've forgotten. I'll just serve this. Yeah, so I'll have a little bit of lettuce and I'll need some oil and some balsamic, the lettuce salad. The I, got, I bought some lettuce in out of my garden this morning, which is all this lettuce, so hopefully there'll be enough can as Megan could Megan just see how I do this so everybody can see and I need some balsamic of some sort maybe pomegranate or something I think would be good with this 
And we're going to make a sauce for the next dish out of these peppers. And these peppers are already cooked and they're kind of a sauce already. So I'm going to steal some of them to put with this because I know peppers with this Mexican chicken is going to be really good. There we go. Somebody's broken into somebody's car. A little bit of, and we've got any cherry tomatoes over there? Tomato of some sort. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil on there. I'm going to use this pomegranate vinaigrette. Reasonably generous because I want something sharp to go with this chicken dish because it's going to have the richness from the chorizo and I need, I want something to cut through all that rice and everything. So that's why I want a reasonable amount. So they're just getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that, the pomegranate olive oil. Yep. Tiny sprinkling of the Murray River over the top. And green basil. And then I'm going to take some of our, oh, this looks good. I'll put it. As you can see, there's heaps of it. Yeah. And then I'm just going to slot a little bit of that basil in there. And there we go. But just a little extra drizzle of olive oil. Are we getting the message yet? Yeah. <laughs> So I think, actually, yeah, that's going to, I want to have two, I'm oh, really dry, really dry, because it's really hot on either end. There you go. And we've got another one in the oven, which is Tim's one. Oh, no, all good to go. Okay. I'll, I'll come back and get that. Um, all right, so to me, that's a pretty hearty meal, whether it's in the middle of summer or whether it's in the middle of winter. It'll be hearty, it'll be so packed full of flavour. Is it nice cold? You could roll it up and probably crumb it and bake it in the oven <laughs> would once it's cold. But it, yeah, it's good cold. I've had it cold, trust me, it's good cold. And there's, the oil kind of comes out and becomes a sauce with it, you know, like that, that you, I want plenty of oil in it because it's all the flavour from the chorizo and stuff. You see how it's coming out? And some of that colour has come from the peppers that are in there. There you go. Hazel, what's this dish like? You've had, we had that last night and the night before. Like, we've had it like three nights in a row. Is it any good? Yeah. Yep. No go. Okay. This sauce is super easy to make. So you get some of this, which is called peperonata. It's in the sauce. We get some wine. You've got the recipe, some white wine. And a little bit of water or stock goes in there. I'm just guessing amounts. And actually, I want to make a double one, so there's plenty of sauce for you guys to taste. And so we'll put plenty of it in. So all the work has been done, and all we're going to do is bring it up to the boil. Because what we need to do is cook the alcohol out of the wine. So this sauce would be beautiful over a piece of chicken off the barbecue, a piece of steak off the barbecue, over vegetables. And we're going to serve it with a mushroom that is filled with an aubergine and walnut dip. But we're putting it in the mushroom and we're going to roast it. So the next thing we're going to do is make these, these, uh, this mushroom dip. And the first thing, so last night I went to the barbecue and I put three eggplants on the barbecue and I just roasted them on the barbecue until it's soft. And now I can just peel the skin off and they're like kind of gone black or blacker, because they're black to start off with. And now you can just open it up like that, and then, no, I can do it. So I've sort of started the process, and then I can grab a spoon and just scoop it out like I would 
an avocado, but just being careful not to get too much of the skin. Oh, it probably took about 15 minutes on the barbecue and I had it on as low as it could go, as the barbecue could go. You can see it's soft, but you'll be able to tell with a pair of tongs when it's ready. And you could cook them just in the oven. I did prick it though. I did get a skewer and prick it about three or four times. In fact, I just might be easier if I just scrape it on here. You're getting this over here. So scrape it off the skin like that. And I made, I made up a bigger batch this morning for you guys to have a taste of. So it's aubergine that goes in, two of the garlic cloves that are roasted, that we've roasted. And if you want to put three in or four in, feel free if you like more garlic flavour. Walnuts, quite a lot of walnuts. Actually when I did it this morning I put all the walnuts and the smoked paprika and all the other ingredients in first. So. It's actually four tablespoons, four garlic cloves, so I'm putting six in. Tablespoon of lime juice or lemon juice, half a teaspoon of Murray River salt, and anybody want to guess? Extra virgin olive oil, quarter of a cup. There we go. Let's give that a whiz up. Walk away and forget about it. Now over here, we've got this pepper sauce. I just need to literally boil it for two or three minutes and then I'm going to add some cream if I can have the blender up, Suwadi, when you come back. And I've got the mushrooms and you want big mushrooms like that. And I've just cut the stalk off. And I use that in my chicken dish, all the stalks. Um, you need the blender up. That's good. And I've got some chopped parsley to go in here. Curly leaf or Italian parsley doesn't matter. And smoked paprika. You got my little uh, tablespoon measures? Because I've done the eggplant on the barbecue, right? So I'm sort of getting that smokiness going on. That's why I want to use smoked paprika with it. And smoked paprika and walnuts, really good, right? So let's get some smoked paprika in there. Give it a nice, just, just ever so subtle, really, the paprika. And I need to get... Um, I put the salt in, I put everything in. Yeah, I've got everything in there. So it's just a case of throw everything in, let it blend up. And if you've got a tray that I can put that, that can go out there for. Ross, do you want to come and grab? Need some tea towels. Oh, you got, you got some here. So just scrape the sides down so you make sure you get everything. But now you're getting this. Now you could use this as a dip. Just a dip with crackers or whatever you like with wet, you know, courgette sticks, some pieces of radish, carrot, celery. But I'm going to fill the mushrooms with it. Here we go. So we just come along here like this and fill the mushroom and overfill it like that. And then just go around like that. Now, you, I, I, when, I'd fit, when I tested this recipe, I actually laid some pine nuts on top and then literally 20 minutes in the oven and then it came out, I sprinkled a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top and back in the oven for the cheese to melt and then I put it on this sauce which is going to be ready any minute. Have you got a mushroom cook that I could have out there? Sure. 
Well, I just need one that's ready now, so it doesn't need to be cooked. It's just to look at. So I'm sure these guys won't mind if I, it's not quite ready. So I've got a little bit of cream going in now just to richen it up. And you can see from the recipe, I don't put a lot of cream in. There's not a lot of cream going in there, but it's just going to richen this up. Then into a blender. The sauce will last in the fridge for probably a week. Oh, look at those. These haven't got the cheese on, but you can pretend. Oh. Here we go. So, oh, they're going to be more than five minutes. Put them in this oven here. And we'll put some cheese on. That has been cooked, it's cooled down, so we're heating it up again. So you could cook these in advance. You could now take that out and heat it up on the barbecue. They look kind of different, don't they? Anyway, let's puree this up. I'm done now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Yeah, so give it a good puree up. And look at the colour. Whoa, shit, that's hot. Here we go. So, look at that beautiful colour now, right, of that sauce. Absolutely fantastic. What does it taste like? Hey, it's bloody beautiful. Hazel's not there, that's good. No swearing. And how am I, um, asparagus? Oh, they're not in? Okay. So I'm just going to put some sauce in the middle of the plate. Some garnish stuff. The mushroom is going to, some garnish stuff. And then mushroom on top. And normally the cheese would be grated and then put in the oven, but I'm just going to grate a little bit on top like that, which you could do, which I think looks quite nice anyway. Maybe that's a new way of doing it. And I think just a little bit of, you know, chopped parsley on top or whatever you like. But today it is a flour. So to me, that would be a really delicious entree. Do you want to get a little? Get my fingers out of it. There we go. So really simple, right? So you need the this pepper sauce, delicious with anything, even with pasta, if you're going to indulge in pasta, it would be delicious, but so easy, the mushroom, the dip in, roasted in the oven, put the white wine, a little bit of water, oh, a little bit of stock rather, touch of cream, puree it up, right? Oh, that's a good question. The question up the front here was when the Four Wheels of Health cookbook comes out. Uh, Sean and I were discussing that just yesterday. We are halfway through a book. We're halfway there. Um, yeah. Basically, you know, we have to hire photographers. We have to hire people to come and do the, uh, the present, you know, like set the setting and all that. So we, as soon as we get over a threshold on each course, we put the money into that. But with this whole COVID, we've just, we're literally surviving and that is it. So we haven't been able to do any for a while. So we've got to get over sort of double what we're doing now to start paying to do that. So that's our mission. So the minute you see us doing more people, we should have a book. So whilst we're on that, our next course starts on the 30th of January. 
we are launching a Christmas gift idea, which is a $99 seven-day online sleep course. You get the bag. Where's the bag? Uh, you get a bag. You get a beautiful voucher. So if you want to give somebody a really good present on how to sleep, we're running with new content, additional content to our current sleep course. So if you want to give somebody a really wicked pr present if they're not sleeping well, it's a seven-day sleep course, and it starts on the what, 21st of January. Uh, you, you get the, the bag and the voucher. So in there, there's um, some hemp hearts and some dead sea salts, and you get the nice voucher, and you get to write who it's to and from and the date that the course starts. So if you're looking for a really cool Christmas gift idea for people that don't sleep well, it's $99. And to be brutally honest, Sean and I were like, how are we going to survive until we do another course? I don't know, we'll do a sleep course. <laughs> but that same day, somebody had said, you guys need to do a sleep course because loads of people out there don't sleep. D is it a good idea? Yep. Is it the sort of thing that you think that you'd buy for $99 to give somebody? It's amazing how the room goes quiet, isn't it? <laughs> You can buy it for yourselves. Anyway, I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you to the four wheelers that have come along today. You're awesome. We appreciate your support. We hope we make a difference to your life. Thank you to all the team here. Thank you to Swati, everybody here. Um, this little business has been really caught out because we supply restaurants and then we've had ships delayed. Our shipment for Christmas has been delayed by six weeks. The business is going to completely miss our Christmas rush. So we're in the, you can turn the camera off now, we're in the shit like you wouldn't believe. So in our business. So what's happening here is this lovely lady bought me <laughs> some eggplants, some Parmigiano Reggiano, um, and tomatoes, and I've added a courgette as my. And you bought basil as well, and I'm so we're frying the eggplant in the extra virgin olive oil because that's what we had, and we want it to brown up. I'm looking for those browns, so maybe don't shake it, move it too okay. much, just like let it get going. I've got the tomatoes and the wine over here, and I'm gonna need the biggest plate or coolest plate you can find me. And there we go. So I'm going to grate some parmesan. And I'm going to put that on. Can I have an oven tray, Sawadi? An oven tray with some greaseproof paper. I'm going to turn the oven temperature up. We've got to do something cool with this parmesan, so I'm going to make a parmesan cracker. Um, and these, I just want these tomatoes to sort of wilt a little bit where the skin starts softening, but the wine is getting infused in there. And then we're just, which they're done enough. So they're gonna be just warm. And the olive oil's going in, that with the infused olive oil. Ah, oh, does that smell good? That does smell good, right? A little bit of, Salt in there, the Murray River salt. Yeah, this is right. You like my plate they've given me? You can't choose too many things in life, can we? I don't break it, otherwise, Megan, it must be Megan's. Well, they're starting to look good. I need an oven tray. And that is just going to sit there for the second. And I've got a grater. Just straight, straight on here, straight on there. Beautiful. Put a little bit of, and I'll have another piece of grease proof. Oh, great. Some of the Parmigiano Reggiano on there. One ninety is good. And I'll have a backup one. There we go. No, no, they're, 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 they'll be perfect now, I reckon. A little bit of like that. I'm going to put a little bit of cracked pepper on the cheese. And so, so what he's going to put it into the oven. They're good. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is just take those out. Stand back because it could be a bit. 
Here we go. I've just got some paper towels there. Ah, oh, it's been a long time since I've done a magic box like this. <laughs> Righty o. Of course, you could use that oil again. I put those there. I'm going to put my salad. Uh, I'm going to wait just a few minutes, so I'm all ready to plate up. Got my tomatoes. I've got my salad, we'll ditch that. Try and make this area look a little bit pretty. I'm gonna dust your eggplant with just a little of the smoked paprika over the top. Just a little bit like that. And I am going to carefully try and make this look quite cool on the plate. A little bit of salt. I haven't put any salt on the eggplant yet. All right. Now, start putting our tomatoes on that have been cooked in the white wine and a little bit of the oil. I want to see a bit more of this beautiful eggplant, so I'm going to put these guys on top like that. There we go, and how's Sheffy? Sheffy, you reckon? Hopefully it tastes Sheffy. <laughs> and now. So that's the raw courgette, spring onion, pomegranate vinegar, and the lemon infused vinegar with a little bit of the, a uh, little bit of salt on there. I don't want to pellet now. Something to get a, a palette knife or a fish slice. Okay. Right, we're going to make an omelette after this, yeah? Don't you think? Yes, I Good think. idea. Let somebody else have the time. Oh, yeah, who want, who's no good at making omelettes but loves omelettes? Do you want to make an omelette? Okay, we'll do that. I just. Um, Hmm. No, not working. I used the wrong side of the. Uh, oh, I didn't even know there was a the right side. I used the wrong side. Are you getting more grease proof? I can't understand why. Is it actually grease proof? What is it? It is grease proof. I used the wrong side of the grease proof, but she gave, I was given enough parmesan, so how am I going time wise? Am I over time, probably, am I? Factory's going. 
it shouldn't need it. I made these at home yesterday for the, um, the what's call it I was going to do? Yeah, truffle eggs. Okay. Probably similar. Okay, so I need eggs and where is the the um asparagus. Yeah. It's enough. Okay. So the am I allowed to put the asparagus on there? So I need eggs. Ross, I need eggs, please, unless you've got them over there. No. I need eggs. Yeah, just uh, whatever you got over there. We good? Thanks. Okay, so you're going to crack three eggs in here. So the trick when you crack an egg, I don't know whether you all know this, but lot, most people crack an egg on the side like that, on the edge of something yeah. like that. But the real, the easiest way to crack an egg, is that, and the best way is actually like that, straight down. And you'll always get less shell into the, into the bowl if you crack it that way. So let's have three eggs in there. We're going to do a three egg omelette. Reckon that's enough? Probably, eh? If it doesn't work this time, I'm going to give up on this. No, sticking to it. So the other way you can, I don't know why it's sticking to this. This is, is it baking paper or grease proof? Do we know? Normally it wouldn't stick, but you can actually do it on a plate in the microwave. When it starts bubbling, you can take it out. And it's normally soft enough when you first get it out. You could put a little salad and roll it up and it's like a cigar of crunchy parmesan but with a salad in the middle. And it's normally really easy to handle, but this is, I have no idea why it's sticking. There must be some kind of difference. Anyway, I'm gonna just grate some Parmesan over the top. And I think we're, we've got a nice platter there. Do you wanna just go and show everybody what I've done, see what they think? Thank Maybe I'll try. Should I put that like that or like that? Probably like that. <laughs> oh, okay, let's make an omelet. So we've got a bit of courgette. Do you like courgette? Okay. So how come you're no good at making omelets? Oh, your husband does it. Okay. So let's make. Have you got a t uh, an apron? Oh, you're not worried. Okay, let's do a courgette and mushroom omelette with cheese. Good idea? It normally sticks? Okay, so let's, I want, let's get a little, not that one because that's lemony. So get some olive oil into the pan. The big, big pan, yeah. Yeah, go for it. So we're going to cook the ingredients for the omelette. That's enough, yeah. And then now we're just going to get those in there. And you could season a little bit of salt and pepper. It'll take a little while to heat that up. A little bit of pepper. Yeah, good, good, good. That'd be awesome. Yeah, a little, little sprinkling. Just a little sprinkling. Because when we're using Parmesan cheese in an omelette, the Parmesan cheese is salty, right? So we we be very light on the salt we'll put in on the filling, like just a tiny little bit like that. So now you need to turn this into a blender. So 
put the bowl on the side, put a fork in, and mix it up. Did anybody see my video on making scrambled eggs four different ways? Yeah. The Trump one there. Yeah. So you want to keep doing like that. So you're turning it into a blender. So you're just doing that because we don't want any bits. There you go. We don't want any bits of white in there. Now, when I when I used to interview chefs and employ chefs, what I would do is I'd say, "Hey, do you want, what do you like at cooking omelets?" And of course, they'd all go, oh, "I'm pretty good." And I'm like, "Awesome! The kitchen's that way. Go and cook an omelet, whatever you want." And um, you would get you tell a lot from somebody cooking an omelet their ability to be able to season their degree of cooking and then their presentation so let's see how i go right i need a plate though that's all thanks did well simon well done well, that work out all right um what could we stir it with we could stir it with that yeah just and I think we'll put a little bit more olive oil in. So we're cooking the ingredients for that's going in the omelet. Yeah. The mushrooms are pretty chunky. They're very chunky mushrooms that I've cut. <coughs> <coughs> Let's cheat this a little bit and take the mushrooms out and cut them so we're a little bit quicker. And we'll put them back in. So you don't need to put cream, you don't need to put water into your eggs. It's just eggs and we're going to need butter. So we're just making these a little bit easier, quicker to cook. There we go. <coughs> okay, a little bit of pepper. Yep. Shall I put the pepper in? Yeah. Little pepper into our eggs and a little bit of the, a pinch of the May River salt in there. It doesn't matter that it looks like it's sticking. Okay. This looks like what I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that look that looks great, so Adi. And we've got cheese, so and I'll need a clean tea towel for afterwards. Okay, that'll be good. So we'll take that off the heat. We'll put Oh. Oh. That's obviously got plastic in. What do you do when you're stuck to the... We'll get there. Here we go. <laughs> what do you reckon about that, YouTube, eh? Looks like just now. Right, I'm going to... See, that's how you create flames at the bottom of the pan. Right, now we're going to put some butter in. So I want you to put like a good... About that much? Just boom in there. Uh, do you want smoked salmon in your omelette? Yeah, why not? Do you want smoked salmon? Why not? Okay, so you need a fork and you need a spatula. Okay. We want that to be bubbling. And then we're going to pour all the egg in in one go. We've got our filling ready here, yeah. which has been seasoned. We know it's going to taste good. We've got a grater here for a little bit of parmesan, which we'll put in. And I think we can make the center this work. So cooking an omelet, it's all about how hot your pan is. So the key is what we want here is once the, uh, the butter is like really bubbling, or as soon as that butter has melted, I want you to pick that up and pour it straight into the middle all in one go. Okay. The second that butter is gone, give the pan a little shush. Yeah, that's it. Butter's melted, in you go. Beautiful. Right, get rid of that. We need to start working. So now what you need to do, see how you poured it up the side? Yeah. Move that away, down into there. Now, the, and you've got to be a little careful because it's quite hot, right? Get the fork flat down like that okay. and move it around. It started to cook. And if we think it's cooking too quickly, pull the pan off. And it's pretty much ready because we want it to be creamy inside right so now we fill the holes right now put your mix in right there 
Oh, all over it. Okay. Oh, no, where should I put oh, it? Oh, we kind of want a line because well. we want the... There you go. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Relax. Beautiful. A little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top there. Mm -hmm. Right, now... And it's going to want to push it down. So see how it's almost coming out of the pan. Fold the edges in like that. And now we can see the degree of cooking. There's no colour on it, right? Yeah. See, it's not, not coloured. Get it back on the heat and push it into the corner of the pan. Fold these guys up. So we make the shape of a cigar. Now we're going to cook it like that because it's creamy in the middle at the moment. So hold it like that. Right, so let's have a peek and see under here. Have we got any colour on there? Not yet. Not yet, right? So we want a little bit of colour. Let's turn the heat up. But we're holding the pan like that, on an angle like that, so it sits down. Because we want a nice shape and we don't want the centre, which we know is creamy, to cook anymore. And eggs keep cooking, so you've got to stop a little bit early. Could you do the same thing on an induction? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. On induction, no problem at all. Right, I think we've got a little bit of colour there. Can you peek yep, under there? Yep, yeah, a little bit of colour. So now what you do is you come over here and you tilt your plate up like on an angle and you've got two things like this, both on angles. We bring them together and then flip it over. Right? And now we've got a nice looking omelette. It's got nice colour, and it looks good. Now what we want to do is we want to make it look like a cigar. So you wave your tea towel over it that's nice and clean and you cover it and hide it and then you go hey presto like that and you use your fingers like that then you pull it off and it's the shape of a cigar. Is that cool? cool? Yeah. Alright. Happy days. Do you want to go and show everybody? Yeah. At your omelette. Well done. Round of applause for the omelette girl. That is it. The shop's open. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see you later.